I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education with another Teacher of the Year profile and we're visiting now with Holly Payne who is the Teacher of the Year for the Robles School District for 2015. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. So tell us uh, about yourself. Tell us uh, where you teach, what the name of your school, and tell us what you teach, what okay. you do. My um, school is Robla Elementary School. It's in the Robles School District. I've been teaching third grade there for the last six years, and then kindergarten and sixth grade, the other part of the 10. Um, it's a fabulous school, great kids, great administration, wonderful peers, and I teach because I love kids. I love children. I love seeing their, um, their little aha moments when the light bulb goes on. I love it when they say, no, Miss Payne, we need, want to keep working. And I'm like, OK. So I, I, I teach because eventually I want them to be ruling our world. And I want to have really good people in charge of me. So, so tell us about the students and the demographics in your district. Um, we have a very diverse school. Um, in my classroom I have about 70 percent who are English language learners and um, it's in a rural area so we have some kids who um, you know, live on little farms and have gardens and it's a really great place to work. Mm -hmm. So when you're in a, in a situation where you've got you know 70 percent English learners what kind of challenges does that present for you as a teacher? Um, well, I don't, it, having the language barrier with their parents, I believe, is more of a, um, a challenge for me. The children, I think good teaching is all about showing realia, whether they're English learners or um, English only learners, and having them in, re, speak in complete sentences is just good teaching. So and that's what we do and that's what it's proven for um, EL students is to have lots of realia and mm -hmm. speaking in complete sentences. So I feel if I'm, I'm doing my best teaching, it's not that much of a challenge. The, it lies in with parents and being able to communicate with them and having the right translators when I need them. Mm -hmm. And so you're in a very small district. Yes. And so what's that like working in a small community? We're a family. I, I love it. I have been teaching at three of the different schools in our five um, in our area, and we have get-togethers. We have um, after-school professional development, and we know everybody by name. If I need any help with a, a, a concept or something, I just get on the phone, call up somebody from Main Avenue or Taylor Street, and we just have a little confab real quick and like puts it in perspective email we're all of us five minutes away from each other so it's very nice we have sometimes um, morning coffees with different people and so I, it's it's really family oriented I love it so you say you've been teaching for 10 years yes okay so in that tenured amount of time you know a lot of things have happened in education in those 10 years yes what do you think have been the biggest changes and maybe the biggest challenges um, I think the biggest change and challenge goes all into one. It's with Common Core. I began teaching with um, a very scripted curriculum. And even though I took it and ran with it and made it fun, it was all done for me. Whereas now with Common Core, I'm able to explore and have fun and make learning even more meaningful. It's mm -hmm. not to get this um, unit done by a certain time, I can have a little freedom with that. So the kids really get to jump in and get their hands in the information and work with it. And so do you think that'll be the biggest challenge? Because that's ongoing, because it's it's really fresh. Yeah, where yeah. the challenge yeah. lies, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, where the yeah. challenge lies is um, there is no curriculum. It's, you know, teachers are having to um, cobble things together and put things go out and get new books and novel studies and we create our own so it's a little bit more time consuming um, but in so doing that even though with the time it takes I'm learning even more so that when I go to teach it everything is ready to go so it it's a challenge with the time and the money the funding but it's also one of the greatest I think it's going to be a, 
a great new change for us. So what do you see the, is, with the advantage of co the Common Core with the emphasis on critical thinking? What, what are the advantages that you see that will benefit the students from that? Well, the um, benefits of critical thinking are we, we critical think without even knowing it as adults. We see a problem, we think about it, we act on it. Children, I find, they have a problem and they don't know where to go from there. As we're going through the critical thinking, they have a problem. They now can stop and think, okay, what can I do to fix this problem? Can I explore it? Can I go find a teacher? Can I find it in a book, on the computer? There's ways now for them to access the information. And teaching them and giving them these, um, these alleys of modes of uh, learning is going to benefit them and get them ready for their life skills as they grow up. So it'll be interesting to see how that transitions over the years. Definitely. I think it'll be, a, I think we'll see a lot of growth in the years to come. Yeah. Now, have you always wanted to be a teacher? Um, not really. <laughs> not really. It's okay. I, You're not the first <laughs> teacher to ever say that. No, my mom's a teacher. My aunt's a teacher. And we grew up, um, my mom was in a private school and with permission from her principal, if we were sick, we would, you know, sleep underneath her desk while we were getting better. And if we felt better and we weren't contagious, we'd get to go and read to the kindergartners. I love that. Mm -hmm. I came into babysitting where I, am, I would babysit all the time. That's how I made my extra money growing up. And then it came to where I was going to a junior college and it was time to transfer and I had to make a decision. And it was kind of a no-brainer after that point. I love kids, love them, and I was tutoring, and I, all these different roads led me to this, so I'm like, it's not that far of a jump, go ahead, and I'm glad I, I jumped in, and I haven't looked back since. And so, uh, in that amount of time, you know, you, you've probably uh, learned some, some tricks along the way to, to motivate kids, and, and do, what are some of the, the classroom uh, tricks and tools that you use? Well, this last year, it, it was kind of a development, but I put it into use this last year was um, our warm fuzzies. And kids love the least expensive things. They're pipe cleaners. But if you get caught doing something nice, um, nice to your neighbor, being a good citizen, doing your work, being a great participator, um, just being an overall great, you know, I don't want to overlook any of them. They earned these warm fuzzies. And they come to school ready to earn their warm fuzzies, and they get to buy things. They get to. Um, have their shoes off for an hour in the classroom. They get to sit on a stability ball instead of their classroom chair. They get to sit in my desk instead of their desk. And these little things really motivate them to come to school, to be ready to learn, to just be motivated to get into the learning. So I was really surprised and really happy that it worked. Mm. So Those are the things you need to do to, to motivate the, the kids. Yes. What about yourself? What, what are some of your own personal motivational things that you do for yourself? Or, um, or are the kids enough motivation to get you going? You know, to motivate me, it's my camaraderie with my peers. If I can get with them and we get excited over something that we're going to give to the kids or to teach to the kids, that motivates me. I get excited. I'm still, I still love to learn. I've never stopped. I attend every professional development class I can get to. Um, anything that I can put into my classroom, I will, and that, that kind of gives me a motivational high to mm -hmm. just get in there and keep going. Mm -hmm. So what was your reaction when you found out that you were Robles Teacher of the Year? I was surprised because we have some great teachers there. Um, I was honored, but just very definitely surprised. Mm -hmm. That was great. And so what would you say to those people who are thinking of being a teacher, who, who might want to go down that road? How would you, how would you take them there? Um, I first would tell them to get in and start volunteering right now. See if it's a good fit for them. Um, I, right out of high school, I was a teacher's assistant and um, a cafeteria worker, so I was in there with the kids. I tutored the kids. I'm not, um, I'm not a stranger to how kids act and how they are and what they need. So to any teacher, get it, or want to be teacher, get in there, be with the kids, and see if it's a good fit, because we need you. If it's a good fit, we need some great teachers. So don't give up, plow through, 
and then all the benefits come in the smiles of the children every day. Hmm. Well, congratulations to you on being named Robles Teacher of the Year. We appreciate your time. We've been speaking with Holly Payne, who is the Robles School District Teacher of the Year for 2015. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.